In this lesson, we will look at the concepts surrounding land law or property law. So as an introduction, one of the first aspects of land law that you will encounter is the concept of proprietary rights. When we continue our course, you will understand how proprietary rights differ from different other kinds of rights which you might find in, for example, contracts, commercial, or even criminal law for that matter. But as a basic outline at this juncture, proprietary rights are rights which attach to land and not the owner. Now, the importance in relation to these rights are quite simple. Firstly, proprietary rights attach to land, which means that in the event of a sale or a conveyance or a transfer of property, those rights, if the purchaser is bona fide, if that third party purchaser is buying in good faith, those rights that the subsistent owner was enjoying will transfer without issue to that new owner. Whereas a personal right, which you can consider as the opposite of a proprietary right, only establishes itself within the subsistent or the current owner. So proprietary rights are quite important and land law is surrounded heavily by proprietary rights. And most matters stem from the fact that whether a right was proprietary or not. Now, when we consider proprietary rights as a whole, it can exist either as estates or interests. Estates are in relation to ownership of the land itself, while interests are in relation to rights which are enjoyed over your land by others. Now, this might seem counterintuitive or counterproductive at the outset, but as we go along the course, you would understand how interests and estates differ and how certain other people might need to, in certain locations, have rights over your own land. Now, much like many other aspects of law, no matter what subject, no matter what topic that you're going through in law, these rights, as in proprietary rights, either in the form of estates or interests, can be either legal or equitable. Now, when we consider legal estates, they can exist as freehold and leasehold. And we'll consider these a bit in depth when we go into registered and unregistered land. Whereas legal interests are easements, mortgages, and rights of entry. Things which do not fall under either of these categories become equitable. So this is the easiest way for you to define and then delegate which rights remain legal and which remain as equitable. Now, it must be noted that everything isn't as clear cut as I just uh, mentioned it, because if you note down things which have been mentioned as legal estates and legal interests are in the best case scenario. So they may be legal. It's not in every single situation. That's up to the court to decide. Now, in relation to enforcement of these rights, there are three steps that have to be adhered to. Firstly, and this is one of the most pivotal acts within uh, the United Kingdom's legal system, which is the Law of Property Act of 1925. The first step in order to gauge whether the right in question is legal or equitable is whether it falls within Section 1 of the LPA, or the Law of Property Act of 1925. Secondly, if it does so, does the right originate in a deed? Has it been conveyed or has it been mentioned in some sort of deed? If yes as well, has it been registered duly? If all of these components are satisfied, then this legal right becomes enforceable. Just a quick outline. Firstly, does it fall within uh, the categories mentioned in Section 1 of the LPA 1925? Does it originate in a deed? And has it been registered duly? If these three components have been fulfilled, then yes, this legal right is enforceable. Now, where a right becomes equitable and not legal is when one of these aspects that I mentioned earlier, as in does it fall within section 1, is it, does it originate within a deed, and has it been registered duly, is not fulfilled. So, either the right is not in section 1, it is not in a deed or it is not registered. One of these components missing might mean that it becomes an equitable right. Now, as confusing or as difficult as it may seem to understand, these rights do not exist solitarily. There are instances where there can be a legal as well as an equitable owner 
in relation to land. And how this happens is by way of a trust instrument, where there is a legal owner and an equitable owner. Now, we need to consider land law or property law in the context of it existing prior to 1925, which means prior to the 1925 Law of Property Act, and post-1925, which is after uh, the enactment of the 1925 Act. So in relation to the period before 1925, a legal instrument, whatever it might be, binds everyone if it is being created properly. Contrarily, an equitable interest binds everyone, just like the legal instrument, except anyone who did not have actual notice, constructive notice, or imputed notice. Now, before we proceed, it's best that we have a look at and consider the various statutes that we will be considering throughout this course and are considered important in relation to land law or property law, depending once again on the syllabus that you're following. In relation to unregistered land, the two most important acts to keep in mind are the Land Charges Act of 1972, uh, abbreviated as the LCA 1972, and the Law of Property Act of 1925, the LPA of 1925. In terms of registered land, once again, the LPE of 1925, along with the quite recent Land Registration Act of 2002, or the LRA of 2002. Another act which is not mentioned here but is also considered in some parts during this course is the Land Registration Act of 1925 as well. Now, in the subsequent lessons, we will consider in depth the concepts of unregistered and registered land. But for the purposes of this particular introduction, let's have a quick outline of it. In relation to unregistered, as the name itself suggests, the title of that particular land is not registered in the land registry. There is a distinction between legal and equitable rights, and it is very important to consider legal and equitable in the context of unregistered land. But in the subsistent context, as in, in today's day and age, most unregistered lands by way of certain procedures have now been finally registered. Conversely, registered land has its title duly registered within the land registry, and the concept of doctrine of notice, which is highly important in terms of unregistered land and equitable interests, is almost deemed irrelevant at this juncture. Now that we've had a quick outline and an introduction to the Law Simplified course on land law, let's proceed to the next lesson, which is unregistered land. Thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more and check out some of my other videos, click on the links on screen now. If you want access to the full courses, which includes spider graphs and case summaries, check out the description below. See you in the next lesson.